advanced tech, realistic robots, flying vehicles. The UAE is investing big in the future, and at Jitex, cyberpunk starts instantly. Guests are greeted by a massive digital avatar, basically a giant human-sized service app. It functions like a voice assistant, but it also keeps eye contact, as much as its design allows, shows emotions, and even cracks jokes. It's evolved from the simple holograms of previous years into an impressive, full-scale 3D version. Of course, the first thing that grabs your attention is Naira, a stunning female robot that looks like she stepped straight out of cyberpunk. Her facial expressions feel incredibly alive, she recognizes who she's talking to, and the AI conversation system makes her one of the most realistic humanoid robots on the show. The twist is, Naira is actually a customized version of Amica, built by Engineered Arts. That's why she looks so familiar. But at this expo, Naira is kept on a tighter leash. She mainly holds eye contact while her full body movements are controlled via teleoperation, and that's done for a reason, so she can interact safely with a crowd at the booth and won't get triggered when people invade her personal space, like older Amica demos where she reacted to hands coming too close. But for a robot to be more than just a mannequin, to actually hold a conversation, you need serious AI. And that's why the most talked about guest of the show was Sam Altman. He appeared online, but it still felt like a headline moment, because the CEO of OpenAI has become a symbol of the global AI race countries and corporations are now fully locked into. The message was crystal clear. The UAE doesn't want to be just a consumer of AI. It wants to be a producer. That's why one of the key announcements was the Stargate UAE initiative. Initiative, described in public statements as a future supercomputer slash data center campus built for AI workloads. According to the plan discussed around Jitex, OpenAI and the local tech giant G42 want to deploy AI infrastructure in the UAE at a scale of up to 5 gigawatts, with a first phase of around 200 megawatts promised as early as 2026. Partners mentioned in communications included NVIDIA, Cisco, Oracle, and SoftBank, which is basically a signal that this isn't a headline experiment. It's an industrial-level bet. And that's the UAE's signature style. They show robots, flying vehicles, and smart services on the exhibition floor while quietly building the foundation that makes all of it a real system. And besides Naira and Sam, another crowd magnet was a dedicated zone built around a rescue command center on wheels. Abu Dhabi Civil Defense, together with K2, presented Rod. Not just a vehicle, but a mobile, intelligent command hub. The idea is simple. While the rescue team is still on the way, the machine is already deploying surveillance, collecting data, and helping assess the situation ahead of time. Rod is based on a powerful 4x4 off-road platform that can push through rubble and disaster zones, but the real magic is inside. Two autonomous drones are housed inside compartments. On an AI trigger, they launch for reconnaissance using thermal cameras to find people and mini fire suppression modules to tackle flames locally. And where drones can't fly and humans can't safely enter, Rod sends in another passenger, a quadruped robot dog. It's designed for extreme conditions, thick smoke, toxic gases, and extreme heat. It also acts as a communications node, collecting video and telemetry and streaming everything back to the command center. At the core of the system is an onboard data center powered by NVIDIA Orin processors. AI processes camera and sensor feeds in real time, instantly building rescue scenarios. While firefighters are still driving to the call, Rod already knows the scale of the disaster, has identified victims, and is coordinating resources. This is where you can see the UAE's main trend. Technology not for a shiny demo, but for the minutes that decide every everything in an emergency. If the Emirates build massive, specialized rescue systems, then China is betting on universal soldiers. That's what Engine AI brought to Jitex, even though their robot is far more versatile than it seems at first glance. Engine AI from Shenzhen are industry sprinters. In just two years, they've gone from a lab startup to a serious player, backed by $140 million in investment. The shock of their booth at Jitex is the PM01 model, priced at just $12,000. For the price of a budget car, you get a a full humanoid platform that's ready to work. Engine AI pushes the idea of embodied intelligence. In their world, intelligence isn't about talking. It's about how a robot controls balance, adapts its gait, reacts to crowds and obstacles, and stays stable during sharp movements. So the big impression at the booth is pure dynamism, powerful joint modules, fast reactions, and that feeling of lifelike control. 
Unlike many competitors, Engine AI doesn't imagine their bots as housekeepers. Their target is emergency services and security. These are future guards, patrol units, and rescue robots designed to operate where it's too dangerous for people. The robot looks extremely dynamic and stable, but the developers keep one mystery alive. We've seen it run and maneuver, but its fine hand manipulation skills are still a big question mark. Will this affordable humanoid become a mass solution for city patrol? It's only a matter of time, but the speed at which Engine AI moves from the lab into real-world demos is making the whole industry nervous. If Engine AI is about endurance and patrol, the rest of China's robotics presence at Jitex, more than 300 companies, brought something more subtle. At Agibot's booth, the focus shifts from pure athleticism to psychology and communication. Their flagship model A2 is an attempt to build an ideal social partner. It doesn't just hear your voice, it reads the tone and your facial expression. This is embodied AI at its most human. The robot understands social context. If you start speaking too loudly or aggressively, it politely steps back. If you're friendly, it responds with warmth through head tilts and gestures. This isn't a cold machine anymore. It's a simulation of real interaction. Next to it, the small X2 is basically the party star of the show. With 31 degrees of freedom and perfect balance, it moves to music so smoothly you almost forget it's mechanical. And while X2 is built to entertain, the G1 is built to learn. It's a modular student robot. Using its cameras, it literally mirrors human movements, calibrates its own motion, and learns to interact with objects of different shapes and sizes. Basically, a blank page you can train for anything, from sorting packages to helping around the house. China's developers are showing one clear thing. Their humanoids aren't just walking without falling anymore. They're starting to understand people, adapt to emotion, and learn on the fly. And all of it, under the MangoBot brand, is already preparing for global expansion, turning sci-fi into a commercial product. And at this point, it becomes clear. They're not selling robots. They're selling ready-made scenarios for living alongside them. So China brought a true wow effect to Jitex with Xpeng Aerot and their land aircraft carrier system. This isn't just another flying car concept. It's a modular setup a massive three-axle off-road truck carrying a full two-seat eVTOL aircraft inside. You drive to your location, press a button, and the aircraft launches dramatically out of the back, ready to lift you into the air. And right there at the show, they perform the first public piloted flight outside of China. The market reacted instantly. The company reportedly already has more than 600 orders from the Middle East. Shake-level early adopters from the UAE, Qatar, and Kuwait jumped in line first, with deliveries expected to start in 2027. Price? Around $280,000. In Dubai? That's the cost of a good sports car. Except this one lets you forget traffic forever by simply rising above it. If Xpeng is an expensive WOW product for early buyers, Realbotics shows a different market. Not transportation of the future, but employees of the future that can be packaged quickly for business. Realbotics presented their full-size M-series humanoids, robots designed for front office roles, greeting visitors, answering questions, holding conversations, and acting as a living brand showcase. The key isn't strength or walking speed, it's how convincing the robot looks from a couple meters away, how well it maintains contact, and whether it can stay calm in a real dialogue. Their commercial strategy is also interesting. They market the robots as customizable, by appearance, by job, by language, by audience. It's not one robot. It's a template you can turn into a concierge, a promo ambassador, or a booth consultant. It works best where you don't need deep service. You need presence, something that makes people stop, smile, and talk. One of the weirdest features of the M-Series is mobility. Developers claim the robot's body can, in theory, be folded and packed into a regular suitcase. The idea that you can bring your digital employee to a business meeting and checked luggage is pure cyberpunk. We've seen how China builds robots, and even future transport. Dubai shows something else. How that intelligence turns into patrols, services, and analytics in the real city. And the next booth is the perfect example. First thing you notice? Smart patrol EVs. Think of them as mobile observation posts, 360-degree cameras, automatic license plate recognition, and road analytics. They build a live picture of what's happening around them and help officers respond faster. Not replacing them, but giving them a second set of eyes. Next, smart police stations. Police services without lines, without come back tomorrow. 24-7 self-service stations where you can file reports, pay fines, get documents, or register road incidents. 
And yes, at the booth, they even showed a concept version for coastal zones, hinting that Dubai's police are thinking about land and water. But the most alive exhibit is the DPR-02 by Micropolis, an autonomous ground patrol robot on an off-road chassis. It drives around, performs 360-degree video monitoring, and streams everything to a command center. It's positioned as a solution for protecting large public spaces, where constant visibility and fast incident response matter. And the cherry on top is Dubai ITS, a city system that automates part of enforcement. Cameras detect an event, algorithms classify it, and reporting happens without humans manually reviewing every clip. So cameras everywhere becomes cameras that actually understand what they're seeing. In the end, it's a surprisingly honest display. Dubai isn't trying to convince you that robots already replace police officers. They're showing something more realistic, how you build a city where technology upgrades safety while humans stay in charge, just with much stronger tools. After the Dubai police booths, one thing becomes obvious. Technology isn't gadgets anymore. It's layers of the city. Security, transport, services, analytics. And right here at the show, you find the perfect bridge between smart city on paper and smart city as a feeling. The most crowded spot was the Option 1 Design Studio booth because they did what works best at exhibitions. They didn't explain technology. They let people experience it. At the center was ODS AeroVision, an immersive flight simulator built for Dell Technologies. You sit down, you're surrounded by a panoramic screen, the seat is mounted on a motion platform, and suddenly, you're flying over a future city. And the city below isn't just pretty graphics. Every element is tied to how Dell's solutions work, from infrastructure and compute to AI systems. No surprise there's always a crowd. It's an attraction that entertains and explains at the same time. After Dell's simulator literally takes you above the future city, the next question is obvious. What will ground transport look like when compute and AI become normal? And at Jitex, inside the E and Pavilion, there was a machine that gathers people instantly without any presentation. The Mercedes-Benz Concept AMG GTXX. It's a glimpse into where AMG is pushing electric hypercars on the new AMG.EA architecture. Claimed numbers? Over 1,000 kilowatts of power, roughly 1,000 360 horsepower and a top speed above 360 kilometers per hour. But the loudest focus is energy. The concept uses a next generation battery system paired with three axial flux motors, a rare solution in the auto industry. And Mercedes claims a number that sounds like magic, about 400 kilometers of range added in just five minutes of charging. That's the moment when EV stops meaning waiting at a charger and starts playing in a different league. AMG didn't only hype it up, they backed it with track drama too. In 2025, the concept appeared at the Nardo Test Track, a 40,075 kilometer endurance run in under eight days, plus a series of world records for distance and durability. So this isn't just a put it on a stand showpiece, they're trying to prove it with numbers. And of course, the design, ultra low stance, classic AMG aggression, and signature lighting, including the MBUX fluid light panel, turning light into a communication surface. Inside, a conceptual cockpit and seats with 3D elements, less luxury, more or engineering capsule. Let's take a breather from hypercar record breakers and look at a Chinese startup that chose the most reliable path straight to people's hearts at Jitex. Unex AI brought their robot Wanda 2.0, which is tirelessly making coffee for visitors. But behind that friendly gesture is one of the show's most advanced technologies, the UniTouch Tactile Intelligence Module. Unlike standard manipulators, Wanda literally feels objects. Using 3D environment sensors and cameras, it doesn't just move its arms, it understands the shape and fragility of what it's holding. The same servo motors that hold a coffee cup today could tomorrow sort laundry, wash dishes, or clean up a home carefully without breaking things. The robot runs on ROS2 and its imitation learning system lets you train it without writing complex code. You demonstrate an action and the AI adapts it to the robot's mechanics. So Unit XAI didn't bring just a barista, they brought a universal household assistant you can configure for almost any home task. Another step toward a world where a robot in your apartment is as normal as a microwave, just way smarter. One of the strangest concepts at Jitex Global was the Air Car by Govi, a brand under the Chinese giant GAC Group. Aircar is a modular transformer with two parts, a ground autonomous platform and a detachable flying capsule. Engineers didn't hold back on materials. The body is about 90% carbon fiber, making it extremely lightweight. Flight is powered by 12 rotors. That redundancy is built for safety. Even if two motors fail, the AI
AI is supposed to guarantee a smooth landing, and the intelligence is optimized for obstacle detection, including micro-drones, up to 100 meters away, which matters in dense urban airspace. Despite claims of a near-term release, the specs still look modest. It carries only one passenger, and the flight range is around 20 kilometers. At a price of about $230,000, it feels more like a status gadget for short hops above traffic than a true competitor to Xpeng's carrier. Still, Aircar is a bold experiment, and these weird designs are often what signal where real breakthroughs can come from. Another Chinese startup, Galbot, is pure pragmatism. They showcase the G1 model. At 173 centimeters tall and 85 kilograms, it looks like an ideal industrial assistant. It has two manipulators with extremely precise motor control, letting it pick up, hold, and sort objects of many shapes and weights. But the real value is inside. The compute unit is built on NVIDIA Jetson Thor, and the robot is driven by embodied AI. Galbot doesn't follow pre-scripted routines. It analyzes the environment and adjusts movement in real time. Its training pipeline includes DexGraspNet, one of the world's largest grasp datasets, with over a million training videos across 5,000 different objects. That helps the robot handle objects it's seeing for the first time, without long reconfiguration. Right now, these humanoids are already sorting medicine in several pharmacies in Beijing, and at Jitex 2025, the robot worked autonomously all day without failures, showing system stability. The company plans to scale the solution soon, deploying robots to at least 100 more more retail locations. While some robots do serious work, the small T1 humanoids by Booster Robotics were among the most visible and most mobile participants at Jitex 2025, constantly flashing through the exhibition corridors. Just over one meter tall and around 30 kilograms, they look more like cartoon characters than complex machines. But behind the cute design is a powerful open platform for developers. Thousands of engineers worldwide use T1 robots to train advanced locomotion and balance algorithms. T1 gained major fame through RoboCup, the world championships of robot soccer, and their biggest achievement this year? Stepping onto the field fully autonomously. One of the most futuristic gadgets at Jitex 2025 was smart contact lenses from Exponcio. This is the moment when tech from Black Mirror or Mission Impossible isn't on a movie screen, it's literally on your eye. Exponcio's core idea is an invisible interface. They showed six prototypes and each one sounds like science fiction, an interactive AR lens. It has a micro display and and eye tracking. The lens understands where you're looking and overlays context instantly. Maps, exchange rates, or notifications. A holographic lens with a companion helmet. Built for extreme environments. Where normal AR glasses don't work, the lens gets power and content wirelessly from a special helmet. And it's not just AR. Exponcio also turned contact lenses into a medical device. Prototypes can measure glucose levels in tear fluid in real time and track intraocular pressure, sending everything straight to your smartphone phone. They also showed lenses with nanoparticles for color correction, designed specifically for people with color blindness. The technology is based on unique work with 2D gold conductors and nanophotonics, and the market believes in it. This summer, the company closed a $250 million Series A round. At a $1.35 billion valuation, Exponcio became a regional record holder in wearable tech, so now we wait for a real consumer product. If Exponcio lenses expand what you can see, this next machine lets you stop watching the road entirely. Tensor Auto presented the Tensor Robocar, an ambitious project they call the world's first personal robot car. The big feature is SAE Level 4 autonomy. In their vision, Tensor Robocar owners wouldn't need a driver's license or special insurance. You just sit down, say your destination, and the car handles the rest. It's so independent that it can drive itself to charging or even take kids to school by itself. Tensor emphasizes, this isn't a normal car with autopilot added. Robocar was designed as an autonomous vehicle from the ground up, making it a direct competitor to Tesla's CyberCab. To perceive the world better than humans, it uses a heavy sensor stack, five lighters around the body, more than 100 sensors and cameras, plus a powerful AI unit making decisions in real time. Inside, there's an intelligent space with voice control and smartphone access, where AI analyzes the owner's behavior, remembers frequent routes, and adapts to the habits of the entire family. The developers also emphasize privacy and encryption for all mobility data. Jitex was absolutely packed with high-tech exhibits this year. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss new deep dives into the latest innovations from around the world.